Welcome back to Physics 152 Online. I'd like to work out an example problem showing how to use the results that we get from the Biot-Savart law to find the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire that's bent into several different portions. And so here what we have is a, a drawing where there's a, a current carrying wire that comes in from the left that's really, really a very long wire indicated by the dotted lines and we'll call that segment 1 and then it bends into a semicircle of radius r in segment 2 over here and then finally straightens out and carries a uh, current vertically uh, using the dotted lines to indicate that this is a really long wire and so we'll call that segment 3. And what we'd like to do is find the magnetic field, total magnetic field at point P which is the center of the semicircular portion of the wire. Remember that the Biot of our law is given by mu naught i over 4 pi times the integral along the length of a current carrying wire of the quantity dl cross r hat over r squared. And we'll indicate on the sketch again what these terms uh, look like for each of the current segments. But remember the dl vector points in the direction of the flow of current and then the r hat vector points from the current element towards the point where we're trying to find the field, in this example, towards point P. So let's look at the results of B1, B2, and B3 separately, and then we'll put them together. So what do we know about B1? Well, let's first draw in DL and R hat for this segment, for a piece of current, and I'll use just the arrow that exists there, and call that DL1. So that points along the direction of the current flow and the r hat vector points from that direction or that location towards the place where we want to find the field, towards point P. So the r1 hat unit vector and the dl1 vector are parallel to each other. And that means I can see pretty easily that dl1 cross r1 hat is going to be zero because the two vectors are parallel and the angle between them is equal to zero. And that holds true all along the length of that wire. So B1 is equal to zero for reasons that are pretty clear. B2, now to get B2 we're going to need to examine the orientation of the DL vector and the R hat vector. So again I'll draw the DL vector in using the arrow that already indicates the direction of current flow. So there is DL2 and first I'm going to erase this expression that I wrote down before for DL1 cross R1 hat just to give myself a little bit of extra room here on the sketch. So here is the DL2 vector and then R2 hat points toward the point P from the location of DL2. So that's R2 hat. And my sketch maybe doesn't do it justice but because DL2 points along the tangent of a circle and R2 hat points towards the center of the circle, those two vectors are always 90 degrees apart from each other. And so what I can see directly from that is that DL2 is perpendicular to R2 hat. And as a result then, their cross product will be really simple. So DL2 cross R2 hat using the definition of a vector cross product, it'll be the product of their magnitudes, dl2, r2 hat is a unit vector so it has magnitude 1 and then the sine of 90 is also equal to 1 and so that just gives me dl2. So I can go over to b2, we're going to work this out directly from the use of the bios of our law, so we have mu naught i over 4 pi times the integral of what is now simply dl2 over the distance squared, r squared, well that r vector is simply the radius of the circle, right? So that would become 
r squared and we're integrating along the length of the wire so what we see then is the r comes outside the integral we have mu naught i over 4 pi big r squared and what's left the integral of dl2 is simply the length of that semicircle which is half the circumference of the circle so that would become half of 2 pi r and I've neglected to write in the direction so I should have done that back here where I wrote down dl2 cross r2 hat using the right hand rule you can see that dl2 cross r2 hat is out of the page so I should write down here out of the page and that's what the answer is to B2. Let's see what happens. with The 2's cancel, and we end up, the pi's also cancel, and one of the factors of R cancels. So we end up with mu naught I over 4R, and it's out of the page. All right, so that is our second field component. And now what about B3? All right. B3, we can get, again, by going to the segment of wire, segment 3, drawing in the current element DL3, and then from the point where that is, if we draw in the R3 hat vector, we can see, once again, all along the length of that wire, the cross product DL3 cross R3 hat will be out of the page. So whatever it is that the uh, wire 3 contributes to the magnetic field at point P, it'll also be out of the page. So we can see that, that B3 is also out of the page. <laughs> and yet the integral, setting up this integral, is going to be more complicated because as we move along the length of that wire, wire 3, the angle changes. And so uh, we did a problem in class showing how to do this calculation for a finite length segment. Okay, And if you consult that result, rather than go through the integration process all over again, what we can see is that B3, it's out of the page, and it will have magnitude mu naught i over 4 pi times the distance from the point to the wire. And here, that's also the radius r. And then we had the sine of theta 2 minus the sine of theta 1, where the theta angle was defined as the angle from the dotted line segment to the ends of the wire. And so in one case, the theta 2 would be, for an infinitely long wire, theta 2 would be 90. And you can go back and verify this if you go back and look at the lecture notes. So theta 2 for this wire, since it's a half infinite wire, is 90, where theta 1 is equal to 0. And so what we have in the brackets is going to be 1 minus 0, or just 1. So we get mu naught i over 4 pi r, again, out of the page. So b3 and b2 contribute fields in the same direction. So we're almost ready uh, to write down the final answer. We now know what the component parts are, so we'll just write it down fully to make sure that we summarize all of these results. b total by the superposition principle is the sum of b1, b2, and b3. And remember, we're only calculating the field at point p. If we wanted to know it somewhere else, we would have to do different calculations. We found that b1 is 0, b2 and b3 contribute using the expressions here, and you can see that there is a common factor. I can pull out mu naught i over 4r from both of those terms, and then b2, if I do that, that gives me a factor of 1. b3 would give me a factor of 1 over pi. And once again, the direction is out of the page. So using the Biot-Savart law gives us the direction of each of the components of the magnetic field at point P. And then also, if we perform the integration, 
that the BOS of our law indicates, we get the magnitude as well. So this is just one example of a whole host of different kinds of examples that you could get made up using current distributions consisting of combinations of straight line segments and then circular type segments or at least portions of circles and uh, it's a good practice to try to solve problems like this to make sure that you understand how to use the BIOS of our law. I hope this is helpful as you work on the homework problems and I will see you in class.